130 million people worldwide speak German as their native language. But one person's German isn't necessarily the same as another person's German. You know how I always start my videos with Hallo, Servus? Servus isn't a greeting that's common in all of Germany. It's something that mainly just people in Bavaria say, where I'm from. People in other parts of Germany have completely different ways of saying hello. They also have different names for this very crucial German food or for the last sip of beer. And there's even different ways for telling the time. And then there are countries like Austria, Switzerland, Liechtenstein, Luxembourg, just to name a few, that speak German as well and have a bunch of regional dialects on their own. And I'm excited that today I have five amazing people from different parts of Germany, from Austria and from Switzerland join me to show us how they speak at home. Let's welcome my friend Niklas from Lübeck, which is close to Hamburg, so in the northern part of Germany. My friend Sabine from Ebersberg, which is right outside of Munich in Upper Bavaria. My friend Fabian from Linz, which is in Upper Austria. And then one of my viewers, Leo from Berlin and fellow content creator Loris Zimmerli from Olten in Switzerland. He makes really funny videos about Germans versus Swiss people, so make sure to check out his content. I'll link his pages down below. The idea for this video was inspired by English with Lucy, by the way. She did the same thing with British versus American versus Australian English, and I thought we definitely need to do this with German too. By the way, if you're currently trying to learn German or another language, or you're simply trying to improve your comprehension skills, listening to how people speak in real life is one of the best things you can do, and the easiest way to integrate that into your everyday life and actually enjoy it is with LingoPie. Because you'll simply watch Netflix and other shows and movies in your target language, but it's like watching it with a native speaker best friend. Instead of just turning on the regular subtitles, you can now click on every word within the subtitles and get an immediate translation, listen to the word, or even add it to your flashcards. You can switch between the subtitles in the original language, English subtitles, or both at the same time. You can adjust the playback speed super individually according to your language level. You can have the whole transcript open on the side while you're watching, which makes following along a lot easier. And you can even jump back and forth or listen to a part on repeat. You can also record yourself to check your pronunciation. LingoPie has hundreds of TV shows, movies, cartoons, short films, and documentaries in nine different languages, including German, but also Spanish, French, Italian, or Chinese, for example. And with the Netflix extension, you can use LingoPie while binge watching the German Netflix show Dark, I can only recommend it, or How to Sell Drugs Online Fast, or the Oscar winning movie All Quiet on the Western Front. Front, or the Spanish show Money Heist, one of the most watched non-English Netflix shows ever. And with my link in the info box below, you'll get a seven day free trial for LingoPie, as well as a 70% discount on the lifetime plan. So you can test it seven days for free without any commitment and then get 70% off if you use my personal link in the info box. I have a few different questions and prompts prepared, and I would say we just go through the different answers, starting in the north with Niklas, and then working our way towards the south to Switzerland, where Loris is from. Question number one, how do you greet the employee at the bakery, and how do you greet your friends? Niklas. Natürlich mit einem freundlichen Moin, oder auch Moin Moin, aber eher einem Moin. Leo, what do you guys say in Berlin? Auf Berlinerisch. In Berlin sagt man, guten Morgen. Oder guten Tag, wenn es halt nicht am Morgen ist. And with your friends? So was wie, yo Digga, wat los, hey, oder einfach nur hallo. Sabine, what's it like back home in Bavaria, auf Bayerisch? To someone I don't know, I probably say servus, Christi or grüß gut. To my friends, I probably say servus or Christi. And Fabian, what do you guys say in our neighboring country, Austria, auf Österreichisch? There is so, so, so many different ways, literally every region has its own, probably every village has its own. So a more formal one, a very formal one would be Grüß Gott, which basically means like greetings to God. Yep, just like in Bavaria. On more on a like a countryside basis would be Christi, Servus, or just literally um, Wie geht's? Or just uh, the regular Hallo. Is that also what you would say to your friends? Technically, those more informal ones would all work on friends, but I would probably say Servus, 
not siavus, like you always say, but siavas with an A, uh, or uh, havitiere. Havitiere would, I would only use like with very, very close friends or my very best friends of all. And last but not least, probably the most interesting one for people from Germany, Switzerland. Loris, how do you guys say hello of Schweizerdeutsch or Schweizerdeutsch? This one is like the polite version. It calls Grüezi. Mm -hmm, Grüezi. And when it's a little less formal with your family or friends? Sally oder Hoi. Hoi is cool. I like that. Fun fact, by the way, we are just a pretty small country, but we have four different languages and something like 20 different dialects. So it's so pretty funny. And Swiss German, it's like a secret language. <laughs> it's, it's something between of German and French or whatever, but it doesn't really make sense. The funny part is that the most of the Germans, they don't understand us, but we do understand them. So yeah, it's like a secret language. <laughs> He's not wrong. I actually reacted to Swiss German in a video earlier this year, and let's just say I definitely had a lot of question marks in my head. I also explained a little bit more about the background of Swiss German in that video, so I'll be sure to link that for you guys up here and in the info box below if you want to check it out. And how do you guys say goodbye? Tschüss, ciao. Also, ich glaube, nichts Außergewöhnliches. In Berlin sagt man einfach ähm, relativ schlicht Tschüss, Tschüssi. Wenn man überhaupt was sagt. Ähm, manchmal sagt man auch gar nichts, wenn man aus dem Laden geht. Mhm. Der Berliner ist da nicht so genau. And for friends? Tschüssikowski. Ähm, <lacht> es war schön gewesen, sagt der Berliner auch gerne. Oder es war mir ein innerliches Blumenpflücken. And what about when you hang up the phone? Am Telefon sagt man in Berlin ganz einfach sowas wie Ciao, Tschö, mach's gut, okay. bis dann. To say goodbye, I probably say Servus, Fiati or Fiat. And on the phone? On the phone, I usually say Servus or Auf Wiederhören. That was interesting because it's like the phone version of Auf Wiedersehen, which you've probably all heard before. Um, and Auf Wiedersehen pretty much means until we see each other again. And Auf Wiederhören is until we hear each other again. Auf Wiedersehen or just... Um Schönen Tag noch, schönes Wochenende noch, schönen Abend, schönen Feiertag. Uh, so basically not even saying goodbye, but wishing them something. So like have a nice day without even saying goodbye. Uh, for a friend, I think it's it's basically the same thing with greeting and saying goodbye. So it would be again, Siavas, ciao. Um, Fiatti, uh, on the phone, I, I adopted that for myself where I say ciao ciao, which honestly I do. So I get off the phone faster. I'm a lot on my phone. So I say ciao ciao. Many, many people just say tschüss or tschüss. <laughs> a lot of girls do that, honestly, where they're, where they're like tschüss. Uh, but to my friends, I would basically just again say servus. Yeah, I mean, you guys know that from me at the end of my videos, I always say tschüss. But in my experience, it's not just girls who say that. The polite version, we call them um, Ade. And anything specific on the phone? <laughs> this one is funny. We always say like five times, ciao, 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 tschüss, tschüss, ciao. <laughs> yeah, so actually it's Italian, but yeah. Yeah, I also say ciao all the time. Now for me, I was born and raised in Munich, as you guys know, which is the capital of Bavaria. So it's in Bavaria and really close to where Sabine is from. But within the city of Munich, it's not quite as common to speak Bavarian dialect anymore nowadays. I mean, there are still people who can speak it, but most of them don't speak it in their day-to-day -day life, except for when they talk to their family. That's how my dad is, for example. He can speak it, but he only does when he talks to other people who also speak Bavarian dialect. So I grew up with the dialect, around me through some family members, neighbors, and friends, but I myself speak mainly standard German with a few influences from the Bavarian dialect that you can hear in some of my pronunciation and some of my vocab. So instead of das, I usually say des, for example, or I use certain Bavarian colloquialisms like Packmas or Gema or Zimmer and so on. In this case, the super standard German version for hello would be Guten Tag, but I never say that. I would just say hello or in the morning morning 
guten Morgen or just morgen. I say servus a lot. Or with my friends, I also just say hi or hey a lot. For goodbye, the official auf Wiedersehen, I also never say that. I mainly say tschüss like I do here on YouTube or more informally ciao, as I said, and also servus sometimes because that one can mean both hello and bye. Now, in this video, we only have five different dialects represented. And even within that same dialect, there are going to be differences from town to town or even from family to family. So please keep in mind that in other parts of Germany, Austria and Switzerland, people talk vastly different from what you'll hear today. I mean, Germany alone has more than a hundred different dialects. So these are really just examples. What do you guys call these? In English, you'd probably say bread rolls or buns. Brötchen, Brödel oder auch äh, Rundstück warm. Also eigentlich bei uns Brötchen. Das sind in Berlin ganz einfache Brötchen. Wenn es allerdings ein Brötchen nur mit Weißmehl oder mit Weizen ist und ähm, so einem Einschnitt in der Kruste, dann ist es eine Schrippe in Berlin. That's a semi or semin. So I'm gonna go with semmel, which is the universal thing to say anything that's white bread, honestly. Oh yeah, this is funny. Um, in Swiss German, we always call small things like this. Brötli. Oh, we end the word always with L-I. So actually it's Brot. Brot, this one is the big one. And Brötli, <laughs> it's a small one. So this one is Brötli. That's something that the Swiss language does kind of a lot. And it's why many German speakers outside of Switzerland think that Swiss German sounds really cute. In this case, the standard German term Brötchen does the same thing though, except that for us, the suffix chen is what labels this diminutive form of the word. So the chen is what indicates that this is a small item. I call these Semmeln, by the way. So yet again, the Bavarian word, but with a more standard German pronunciation. Zemin. Okay, what do you call this part of the bread? Clearly a question for people from German-speaking cultures where bread is like our holy grail. Das ist der Knust oder der Knus. Ich weiß gar nicht, ob T oder S irgendwas Knus oder Knust. In Berlin um, ist das der Kanten. That's a Scherzel. So this is what we call a Scherzel or a Scherzel. Mörku. 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 <laughs> But nobody likes this. <laughs> That's true, it's usually the part that's left over at the end. I've never heard that Swiss word before, but in my family, we also call this Scherzal or Scherze, so basically the same as the Bavarian or the Austrian version, which those two are often very similar. What do you call this? So the last sip of a drink, like the backwash in English. Das ist der Uwe. Das steht für unten, wird es eklig. Also der Uwe. Quick explanation. Uwe is actually a male first name in German, which already makes this word kind of funny because you're giving the backwash an actual name. But in this case, it stands for at the bottom, it gets nasty. Unten wird es eklig. Uwe. Für unten wird es eklig. I call that a Nuagal. Yeah, this one is the Uwe. We call this Uwe. It's a name, actually. Uwe. <laughs> Okay, who would have thought that the Swiss version is gonna be the same as in Northern Germany? But that one's quite common all over the place, I think. But you could also call it Spuckschluck in German, so literally the spit sip. I'm with the Bavarians on this one again, though. I call it Norgal, and I actually even write this on the personalized beer mugs that you guys can order on my shop. I usually write, don't drink the Norgal at the bottom, because it's common for us to leave the last bit of beer untouched, because by the time you get there, it's gonna be pretty stale and disgusting. So at Bavarian in beer gardens or at folk festivals, the empty beer mugs usually still have a little bit left in them. That's kind of like beer drinking etiquette where I'm from. We also have the beer mugs without personalization on the shop, by the way, just saying. And yes, these are the same mugs that you'll find at Bavarian beer gardens or at Oktoberfest and those kinds of places. Fabian didn't say anything because he actually misunderstood my prompt. I only sent him this picture where it said, what is this? And I guess he thought that I was referring to the beer mug, the Stein, um, which that wasn't really what I was trying to go for. So that's why he didn't give an answer here. Ooh, this one always creates a huge debate within Germany. What do you guys call these? Das ist ein Berliner. Yeah, that one's the most common version around Germany, I think. Das ist ein Pfannkuchen in Berlin. Ganz wichtig, das ist kein Berliner. Das ist ein Berliner. 
This is always so funny to me because the word for a person from Berlin and I guess the standard German word for a jelly donut is the exact same, Berliner. But then in Berlin of all places, they call it Pfannkuchen, which is funny because that's what most people call a pancake. So it gets super confusing. And I don't know if you guys have heard about that famous speech by John F. Kennedy that he gave in Berlin, where he said, Ich bin ein Berliner. It kind of turned into an urban legend that the audience was laughing at him because he had actually accidentally said that he was a jelly donut. Ich bin ein Berliner. But that's not actually what happened. If you want to find out more about that, I actually have a whole video about that story. It's really interesting. I'm going to be sure to, again, link that everywhere where you can see linked videos. <laughs> okay, Sabino, what do you call a jelly donut? That's a Krapfen. And in Austria? What I would call this is a, either a Krapfen or in a more general term, a Mörschbeis. Mörschbeis or Mehlspeise in like High German, Austrian German, uh, would be literally any kind of sweet you would serve with coffee or whatever. So like a pastry. And what do you call it in Switzerland? Berliner. Those are not Krapfen. Not Krapfen. Oh, okay. I didn't really expect that Loris and Niklas would agree on this one, but I'm sorry, Loris. I'm with Sabine and Fabian on this one again. I do actually call it a Krapfen. There are even more terms for them in other regions as well. And they're a really popular food during German Karneval, which is usually sometime in February. I'll also link my video about Karneval for you. And sometimes when you have a bigger batch of jelly donuts, like at work or at a party, there's often one that's filled with mustard instead of jelly. And needless to say, you don't want to be the one that ends up getting the one with mustard. <laughs> Okay, now we also have to talk about what you guys call this. To the Americans among you, this probably looks like a crepe, which it could be, but the French crepes are really thin usually. And in Germany, this is what our usual pancakes look like. They're just as big as crepes, but a little thicker usually. And the batter is a little bit different. Uh, das sind Pfannkuchen. Das ist in Berlin uh, ein Eierkuchen. Makes sense. I mean, I guess you'd have to call it something different since Pfannkuchen is already taken for a jelly donut. Pfannkuchen. We say a palatschinke. Oh yeah, that one was always so confusing for me as a kid when we went skiing in Austria and the menu said palatschinken because schinken usually means ham. So if you've never heard that word before, you'd never think that this is a pancake or anything sweet for that matter. Omelette. Wait, what? Omelette? So like omelette, like the egg dish? Are you guys sure you don't have this mixed up? What do you guys call picky eaters or how do you describe them? Die nennen wir Krüsch. Da hat der Berliner ein paar Bezeichnungen dafür. Die sind einerseits mäkelig mhm. und andererseits kann man auch sagen, die sind ein bisschen etepetete. Obwohl etepetete nicht nur wählerisch beim Essen bedeutet, sondern ähm, generell so ein bisschen sonderlich ist. Also jemand, der sich für was Besseres hält, zum Beispiel... Der ist so ein bisschen etepetete, ein bisschen mit Vorsicht zu genießen quasi. Yeah, that's a word that I would use too, actually. Maybe not for a picky eater, but for someone who's, I don't know, a little snobby maybe. I'd also probably use it to describe items or places. So like it, what in English I would say a fancy schmancy restaurant, um, I would maybe say is etepetete in German. A picky eater is hakelig. Uh, we would say hakelig. Da, we got it! My favorite word in Swiss German, definitely, it's schnatterfrasig. So complicated, but yeah, schnatterfrasig. Okay, I can see why that's your favorite word in Swiss German. I would like to file a petition officially to adopt that word in the German language in general, please. I feel like that it describes it perfectly, even if you don't understand what it means. Like, it, it makes sense. I don't even know if I have a specific word for it. I would maybe just say that someone is wählerisch, so picky, or maybe say the Bavarian Hocklick. Okay, what is this? Rest vom Apfel. Der Griebsch oder der Apfelgriebsch. Okay. Apfelputzen. Das ist ein Apfelputz. Apfel. Hmm, I wonder, is Apfel the last piece of apple or is that just Apfel? Is that just apple, I wonder? Um, for me, that's a Apfelputzen, so similar to what Sabine and Fabian said, but with a standard German pronunciation. Apfel is apple and then Butzen, I don't even know where that comes from, but that's like the last little piece in the middle. What do you guys call a drink that consists of beer and lemon soda? Entweder Alsterwasser oder Radler, aber eigentlich bei uns Alsterwasser. Radler. Radler. Beer and limo for us is a Radler. Banasch. Banasch or Banasche. 
Interesting. I've never heard that one before, but I guess that's a French word again. I also call it a radler. I think, don't quote me on it, but I think Alsterwasser is more like a thing from just the Hamburg region because they have the Alster River there. But honestly, calling it Alsterwasser gives a kind of a weird connotation at first because like Alster water, I don't know. <laughs> Next up, I don't even know what you guys call these in English. Maybe like a meatball with stuff in it. They're also kind of similar to the Cincinnati dish Geta, but what do you guys call them? Das sind Frikadellen oder Frikadunsen. Aber ich glaube, das ist nur was von unserer Familie. Bulette. We call that Fleischpflanzel. We call them Fleischlaber or Fleischleibchen maybe. Uh, what I think Germans call Buletten. What's funny is that we, or I at least, or my family, we absolutely hate the word Buletten. I don't know where it comes from. Doesn't sound good to us. It's called a Fleischleiber, but if I'm trying to explain what it is, it just sounds gross again, so... Yeah, I mean, Fleisch is meat, of course, but it's also the German word for flesh. And then Leiber kind of goes back to the word Leib, which means body. So yeah, it's probably best not to explain it. And what are those called in Switzerland, Loris? We call it Fleischbölleli. <laughs> Fleischbölleli. Ah, of course we have the Li again because it's something small. I call it Fleischpflanzel. So yeah, the same as in Bavarian. Okay, let's do a few vegetables. What is this? Das, uh, das ist eine Kartoffel. Kartoffel. I'd say Kartoffel, but my parents or older people could also say Erdäpfel or Erdopfel. It's called an Erdäpfel. So basically a ground apple. Erdapfel, Erdöpfel. Favorite word in Swiss German, Hartöpfel. Wait, is this the first time that Bavarian, Austrian, and Swiss people use the same word? Or I mean, kind of the same word, I guess. I think Swiss German adds an H at the beginning, but sounds very, very similar. I use the standard German word Kartoffel. Okay, what are these? Das sind Pilze. Oder auch Champions. Pilze. Schwammerl. You call them Schwammerl? Pots, Potsli. So if it's a small one like this, it's Potsli. I mean, I know a lot of Swiss people don't like it when their language is always referred to as cute, but I mean, you just gotta stop giving everything such cute names them. I mean, but what was it, Pölzli? <laughs> I use the Bavarian term again and call it Schwammerl, which also technically is like a diminutive. Goes back to the word sponge, Schwamm, so like a little sponge, I guess. So yeah, this one, this one also sounds pretty cute. What is this? Hähnchen. Hierfür gibt es in Berlin zwei Begriffe und zwar hängt es damit zusammen, dass Berlin ja geteilt war und ähm, Ostberlin Teil der DDR war und ähm, Westberlin Teil der Bundesrepublik war und sich zwei verschiedene Begriffe dadurch gesetzt haben in den jeweiligen Gebieten. Und zwar ist das einmal das Hähnchen oder Backhähnchen und zum mhm. zweiten ist das der Bräuler oder der Goldbräuler. Oh yeah, Broiler is very East German, I think at least. I remember there was a big TV commercial once where this word was used and that's how I heard it for the first time. Depending on where you're from, that could be a Gickerl, a Gokal, or a Hindel. Uh, the chicken is what we call a Hindel. I think we're pretty close with the Bavarians here. There's many, many different, like there's a broad Hindel, Hindel Haxen, Hindel Schönke, many different things, but we, yeah, it's a Hindel. Um, Bulle, Bulle, probably it's French again, yeah, not probably it is, it's French, uh, Bulle or Hündli. The Swiss German terms truly are so different sometimes. I mean, if we had someone from Southwest Germany in the video, their terms would probably be a little bit closer to Swiss German too. What do you guys call this, if you even have a word for that in your region? Because I think it's more of a Bavarian or just Alpine thing. This is Bayerisches Essen, das essen wir nicht, also eine Brotzeit. Das ist in Berlin eine Stulle. Eignet sich übrigens auch hervorragend zur Beschreibung einer eher weniger intelligenten Person. Ähm, dann kann man sagen, der oder die ist Stulle. That's a funny insult. Okay, so Stulle is a belegtes Brötchen, right? Or a belegtes Brot. So in English, like an open sandwich, I guess. That's super common in Germany in general, by the way. We just eat a lot of bread with something on it and we don't always put a top on it. I mean, we do that too, but it's just as common to eat a Marmeladenbrot or a Nutella Brot or Wurstbrot or Käsebrot or whatever you want to put on your bread without a second slice of bread on top. And do you guys have a name for the whole thing in Berlin? Uh, Stollenbrett oder so. That's Brotzeit. 
we say a bredel jausen, which is basically a bredel is a plank, and a jausen is usually some meat, as you see in the picture, like some meat, some cheese, some bread and stuff. Basically a cold plate. Or bredel could also be a board, right? Like a cutting board. Frühstück, ne? Um, nee, nicht Frühstück eigentlich. Zmorke. Zmorke. Yeah, the verb is zmorke nasse. The noun is zmorke. Okay, so that's what breakfast is in Swiss German. And I actually asked Loris again, and he said he's never heard of Brotzeit. So that's the answer, I guess. There isn't really a term for it. It's funny, though, because in Bavaria, we use the term kind of a lot. It literally translates to bread time. And you could say we're having Brotzeit for lunch, for example, or we're having Brotzeit for dinner. But also when you're hiking or something and take a little picnic break, you could say Brotzeit machen, so making Brotzeit. And even the food that my parents packed me for school, I would refer to as my Brotzeit, even if it didn't contain any bread, but I mean, it usually did, let's be realistic. And even the Tupperware, we always called a Brotzeitdose or Brotzeit box. So that's a very prevalent term in Bavaria. All right, let's talk about time. What time is it here? Es ist uh, Viertel nach zehn. Auch hier gibt es in Berlin um, Zwei Möglichkeiten, die relativ gängig sind, die Uhrzeit zu sagen. Das hängt, glaube ich, auch wieder mit der geteilten Geschichte der Stadt zusammen. Und zwar kann man einmal sagen, es ist Viertel nach zehn oder es ist Viertel elf. For me, that's Viertel nach zehn. This is actually funny because so I'm working in different regions all over Austria and this still goes to confusion because I think there are three or four different ways to say to say the time. For me, it would be Viertel noch zehni, quarter past ten, basically. I'm not entirely sure how other ones say it because I honestly don't like any other way of saying it. But they say Viertel zehni, which could mean that it's 9.15 or 9.45 or 10.15. So I actually had problems with appointments and stuff where Others were late, or I thought they were late, or too early, or whatever, because because of how somebody say says it. But for me, from an upper Austrian standpoint, that would be viertel noch zehni, quarter past ten. Viertel ab zehni. Yeah, there can be a lot of confusion within Germany as well. So then, what is this time? Es ist viertel vor zehn. Es ist viertel vor zehn oder es ist dreiviertel zehn. Dreiviertel zehni. It's dreiviertel zehni, so three quarters of ten. Dreiviertel zehni. Again, this could be like quarter ten in others, viertel zehni, viertel neini, quarter nine. Uh, but for me, it's dreiviertel zehni, three quarters of ten. Viertel vor zehni. Okay, yeah, so Viertel vor zehn simply means a quarter to ten, which is definitely the least confusing version, and that's also what I usually say. But it's also totally normal for me when people say Dreiviertel zehn. Not so much the like Viertel zehn, etc., what Fabian said earlier. That one is not quite as common in my region. This one is deeply ingrained in German culture, wearing slippers at home or just any type of indoor shoes at home. What are those called where you're from? Das sind Hausschuhe. Das sind in Berlin Pantoffeln. Hausschuhe. It's a Batschen or Bordschen. So there could be some varieties like Hausbordschen, house shoes. Finke. Um, Finke. What? That word's completely different. I would not have known what those are if someone had just used that word with me in a sentence. I also call them Hausschuhe. One popular brand of house shoes in Germany are Birkenstocks, by the way. Birkenstock, uh, which, yes, is a German brand, but you'll also just see your classic slippers. What do you call it when two people chat with each other? Also, we say in Norddeutsch, I think it's fast Plattdeutsch, uh, schnacken. Quatschen oder sich einfach unterhalten. I call that Ratschen. It's called Trotschen. There are numerous meanings to that. So it could be that somebody's like talking behind your back and stuff. So they're Trotschen about you. Or it's literally two people meeting up just to Trotschen. Mit öpperem Bretter. Okay, so lots of different ways to say that. I usually say Ratschen or Quatschen. Okay, this is a good one. Kind of going back to our childhood. What is this item? Uh, das ist eine Federtasche. Federmapper oder Federmäppchen. Federmapperl. It's called a Federschachtel. Uh, not to be confused with the famous Federpenal, which famous? is uh, a different shape, a different size, but this is a Federschachtel. Um, etui. 
<laughs> it's French again, I know, but yeah, had to be. Oh, that's interesting, because etui for me is like a brillen etui, for example, for glasses, for example, so like a, a case for glasses. I grew up calling this a Federmäppchen, so I'm with Leo on this one, and then this was always called Schlampermäppchen. No clue why. <laughs> it's funny, though, that most of these answers include the word feather, feder, which I guess goes back to writing with what in English is usually called a quill, in German just a feder or a Schreibfeder, and then also later the top part of a fountain pen. What do you guys call sparkling water? Which Germans love, by the way, or German-speaking countries probably in general. So if if you ever travel there, make sure to always ask for still water specifically if you don't want it sparkling. Das eine Selta. Mineralwasser oder Gänsewein. Wait, what? Is that for real or is that a joke? Um, so he said Gänsewein, goose wine, which I've never heard before, but I mean, we're all here to learn. That's Mineralwasser. It's called Mineralwasser. Wasser oder Mineral. Oh, okay. So instead of mineral Wasser, they just say mineral in Switzerland. That's kind of practical. Regarding what Niklas said, it's kind of funny because I had never heard the German word Zelta growing up in Munich, but that's very close also to what you say in English, a seltzer. I mean, you can also say sparkling water, but the word seltzer is very common too. So it's like Zelta, but with a Z added. Now, sparkling water here isn't nearly as popular as it is in Germany, but when people do drink it, it's mostly popular here as flavored seltzers, or what's become extremely big in the US in the last few years is hard seltzers, so like white claws with 5% alcohol. And last but not least, let's talk about a super small but really important word. When Germans turn statements into a question, we often say something like, it's great weather today, isn't it? Or it's great weather today, right? That's what I would probably use in English, but what do you guys say in German at the end of the sentence? We say super weather, ne? Das ist aber ein dufte Wetter heute, wa? Und dufte ist auch wieder ein Berliner Begriff für ähm, super. Heute ist wieder, gell? I would say goe. So it's very universal. Uh, super Wetter, goe. We always use this word. We all, really, we always use this word oder. We always finish the sentence with this word oder. So super Wetter mit oder. Okay, so we got ne, wa, Ge, goi, and oder, or oder, as they say in Swiss German. That's like the only word that I can kind of imitate. Oder. I usually say ge, like Sabine, but there's also the word gel that is very common in some regions. And I feel like I said that one a lot as a kid. Now, what do you guys call these things where you're from? Share it with us in the comments below to Niklas, Leo, Sabine, Fabian, and Loris. Thank you so much to every single one of you for taking the time to be in this video and sharing all of this with me and us. I would definitely recommend checking out Loris's comedy skits here on YouTube, on TikTok, Instagram, or Facebook under Loris Zimmerli. They're absolutely hilarious. It was great having you on my channel. Same goes to Leo, who was one of my viewers and responded to my Instagram post, I was looking for someone who could represent a fifth dialect for this video. So thank you so much for participating. You really added great value to this video. And Fabian literally started his recording with this little disclaimer. This is actually the very first time I'm doing anything like where I put myself onto YouTube. I think in my life I've posted like three pictures of myself on social media, maybe four. So I'm excited and terrified. So I hope it's good. <laughs> Let me know if it isn't. Well, I honestly think that you might need your own channel. You have a lot of great stories to tell. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you would like to support me in my channel, you can do that by sending a super thanks here on YouTube, by buying me a coffee or just join my Patreon community. These are my social media accounts. I'm actually currently in Germany when you see these. So if you want to see what I'm up to there and what Christmas in Munich is like, make sure to check out my Instagram and Facebook stories. Also, thank you guys so much for an amazing year together here on YouTube. We hit 500,000 subscribers this year, which is crazy. And there have been so many valuable conversations. So thank you so much for all of your support. And now I wish you all einen guten Rutsch ins neue Jahr. And I hope I'll see you back here in 2024. Tschüss.